In this video, we're going to attempt to make a really realistic winter blizzard suspended inside a solid resin snow globe. We're going to be using casting resin, which I've never tried before. As of now, I have no idea whether this turns out the resin is still curing. Fingers crossed, this thing actually turns out in the end. All right, yes, we're going to be attempting something I haven't done before, making a snow globe. Kind of a suspended snow globe, a scene, a winter scene. Obviously, there's going to be lots of snow and stuff in there as well. And if you saw, there's uh, at the beginning there, there is a lamp. And that lamp is meant to work. It was working before I poured any resin on top of it. So fingers crossed that thing is going to be working in the end. As I said, still right now, this resin is still curing. So I don't know if that's going to turn out or not. Uh, I really, really hope that it does. I, I think this has high potential to be a really, really cool little piece. This is a great thing to give out as a gift. If you want to give somebody uh, a bit of you and what you do, it's kind of, um, you know, train pieces can be a little difficult because they gather dust and stuff and it can be hard to keep the dust off. You usually got to encase them in some glass or something. This is perfect. Uh, for showing off your stuff, adding some cool effects like a blizzard on top of things and uh, yeah and it's super easy to clean and whatnot. So I got high hopes for this. I think this could turn out really really well. So what I'm using there is a Christmas ball that I got from the dollar store and then the stand is something I got from Michaels. So really easy. I didn't even have to do any word working or anything for that. I cut the bottom off of that ball that I plan to cover and uh, hold the resin in place with. And to tell you the truth, I did no research uh, before whether or not the resin is gonna like completely adhere to that ball. So hopefully it comes off easy in the end. Uh, I'm not too sure exactly how it's gonna work, but we'll see. So what I'm doing here is actually lifting up the diorama on a little piece here so that it actually sits inside the resin and it's uh, the the big ball is kind of stuck onto the top. I was kind of worried about the resin just adhering to all like the uh, the flocking and the snow and all of that and it could still have the potential to, to just rip off and completely <laughs> fall off the top. Um, pull out your whole diorama with it. So this way it's stuck on top and stays nice and firm with that piece of wood there that I had just glued on. So I'm going to take one of my little lamps here that you've seen me use before in my castle build. If you haven't seen that thing, check it out just above here. Uh, but these lights are really great. I got these just off AliExpress in like a 20 pack for super cheap. They work really well. They're three volts and so you just use two AA batteries uh, in series to each of those being one and a half volts. So when you uh, add them together in series, it makes three volts, which is perfect for this. And I also got some other uh, electronic components to help make that super easy as well. And I'll put all the links for these down in the description below. So yes, we needed to drill a hole through the stand from the bottom to the top. And the reason I used such a thick drill bit for that was just because that was the longest drill bit I had on hand. All right, now if you're anything like me, it's nice just to be able to sit back, take a little break, pull out the phone, bring up a mobile game and just suck yourself in. <laughs> Mobile game full of action! Giant robots! Explosion! And epic coolness! With the ultimate carnage, chaos, and destruction! This video is sponsored by War Robots, and yes, that intro was an extreme over-exaggeration. War Robots is actually a beautiful multiplayer game that you play with five other buddies on one team against six other players on the other. You're playing on beautifully made large-scale maps that are stunning and really give you a sense of their size and vastness. And then there are the robots, and there are more than 60 different robots that you can have in your hangar. They are fully customizable, and you can upgrade the guns and everything on those as well. And again, this is not exactly like the intro that I gave you there. This game is more about tactics and strategy rather than lightning fast reflexes. So download the game using the link below or the following QR code which will get you 100 gold, 50,000 silver and a really cool robot with a unique weapon and skin. And if you download the game before January 30th you get a mega cool hard flamethrower that destroys your enemies. Thank you. 
All right, so we are back to the build here. Sorry that was maybe a little intense. I tried to warn you, but hey, intense games deserve intense uh, ads. <laughs> but uh, so moving on here. So yes, we are using these little lights. I'm just feeding the wires through and I made a little trough for those to fit in. And now we're gonna have to carve out the base to fit this little battery pack in. So this is a little bit more difficult to do. You need some bigger and thicker drill bits. Uh, I've got about a half inch drill bit right here. And now I'm marking out my depth with some tape. So I know not to go any further than that tape because I'm gonna be very close to the surface and I don't wanna accidentally drill right through. So doing multiple passes with the drill, we're able to eventually get that thing hollowed out there and make it so that this can fit. This was a bit of a long process, uh, but you just got to work at it slowly and carefully and you can get this hollowed out and have the perfect fit for your battery pack. All right, so what we want for this blizzard scene is obviously something outdoors. And for that, uh, we're gonna be needing some trees and some bushes and stuff like that to sort of set the scene up. Uh, what I use for trees typically is a shrub that you find out in the country here called sagebrush. Uh, you can find this stuff uh, in central Canada here, also down in the US, but if you can't find any, any kind of branches that look to scale to you, you can go out and do some searching and foraging yourself and see uh, just little branches that look like they could be miniature tree armatures that is perfect and is all you need we're going to be making some fences out of the branches as well and i glue that together with some super glue and then spray it with an accelerant and that helps that super glue to dry very quickly and then i just uh, go in there on the top of that wood drill in a few holes for the trees to fit in as well as for the fence and glue those on Now the ground is going to be covered in snow, but I do want some sections to show through from underneath. And so we're actually going to be putting a dirt texture down and I'm going to be going to the tried and true uh, tile grout. So we've got some nice dark brown tile grout that I'm going to be sprinkling on here. I first wet it down with some watered down glue, some watered down PVA glue. Now that we got this base layer down, we're just going to glue the base of the lamp into place. Next, we'll take some more tile grout to build up the dirt underneath along the pathway. This is just going to give it a lot more depth and character for which to build our snow on top of. And then from there, it's just a matter of wetting down the grout with some water and some watered down PVA glue to really solidify things. So now that we got the base ground layer in place, I'm gonna actually add in some static grass as well. And I really like the look of this when there's static grass in kind of a snowy scene. I got this idea from Kathy Malott. She does a railroad channel and does some awesome stuff and uh, putting the static grass on there and then adding the snow in afterwards just really does a lot. Now, my static grass wasn't standing up here. I don't think it's the applicator's fault. I think it might have been the fact that I was using super glue, but normally it sticks up and stands up a little better. But I just went in afterwards uh, with my little tool here with my knife and made things stand up that way. And then once things were the way I wanted them to look, I then sprayed with the accelerant. From there it's time to add in the snow and for the first layer I'm going to be kind of doing a sort of a hoarfrost look so I'm going to spray everything down with an adhesive, a spray adhesive because I want the snow to build up as if it was frost, hoarfrost. Uh, so I'm going to be getting kind of everything from all angles. I'm shielding the ground a little bit because that is the pathway and where I want the dirt to show through. I'm started by using some tile grout here. And I was sort of happy with that, but I ended up spraying it once again and going with the Woodland Scenics Snow Flock. So after I do that, what I do is spray it with a varnish and that really solidifies things, makes it stick well, and you don't have to worry about it floating away, coming off, muddying 
up the epoxy resin afterwards and it just ensures that all the white tile grout and the flocking sticks to the model and doesn't come off in the resin. And now that we've got our frost down, it's time to add the really thick, heavy snow. And what I've been using for that is Woodland Scenics Flex Base. Now there might be an alternative to this stuff. I'm sure there is. This is the stuff I just have on hand. So that's why I continue to use it. It works really well and goes on nice and thick. It takes about a day to cure and you can even sand it afterwards. It's kind of a hardened chalk kind of substance and it works really well and just looks great. So now it's time to get ready to do our resin pour. So we're going to be needing to glue this ball on, but I came across one little error in my judgment of how long this whole project would take. I thought I could use um, the casting resin all in one pour, but it turns out you can't. This stuff has a maximum depth of an inch and a half, which is not good. This ball is about three and a half inches, three and three quarters. So clearly that is too big. And if I attempted to do it in one full pour, there's a really high chance that we get cracking throughout the resin. So make sure you stick to those specifications. And you can see here that I cut this just higher than an inch and a half. So we need to fasten this on to the stand itself. For that, I'm gonna be using hot glue gun. It works great, it seals it up really well so we don't have to worry about anything leaking out now you remember though that i drilled a hole in the top for the wires if you have anywhere for this resin to escape it's going to find it so i am sealing it up from the bottom below i should have maybe done it from the top before but i actually don't mind any res resin seeping down into that uh, stem because it's just going to add more weight this is going to be very top heavy so the more weight on the bottom the better so the way that these resins work, there is a resin and then there's a hardener. The resin itself, it's, um, it's basically two to one. So for every two portions of resin, you need one portion of hardener. Now, if you're like me and haven't used casting resin before, it comes out very thin, thinner than I kind of thought it would, but it takes almost a full day for that to finally start thickening up. So I would not recommend putting any of the snow flocking in there or anything, any snow of any kind in there and mixing that in. It all just floats right back to the surface. So I would wait for a full day after mixing the hardener into the resin let that sit and then you put your snow in, which I do on the few pours that I do later on. So a quick note on the resin and the safety of that itself. Uh, resin is a toxic substance, so it's good to protect your hands as well as the air that you breathe. There are fumes that come off. You could use a respirator. I used a fan that was blowing right onto my face and the area is working with my window open as well. And I use the nitrile gloves, that's the blue gloves, rather than the silicone gloves. Uh, the resin will seep through silicone, so use those nitrile gloves and you'll be good to go. Now one more thing, very important thing that I was not anticipating is that this stuff takes 72 hours to cure. And I'm doing multiple pours and I needed this thing done yesterday. So unfortunately I didn't have that ready. But what you can do is uh, do your first pour, wait 24 hours to do your second pour, but just keep that second pour in a separate container. Wait another 24 hours, then that is thick enough and your first pour is cured enough that you can pour your second pour in there. <laughs> After 48 hours, that's when you can add your second layer. And then when you're adding that second layer, you also mix your third layer. I had to do this in three layers. You mix that third one as well, 24 hours after the second pour. 
And then finally you wait one more day, do your last pour in there, which is already cured for that 24 hours. And then you wait your last two days. So in total, this took me five days of curing time with all three layers. Okay, so the final pour has been made. Now it's a matter of removing this ball, which I wouldn't recommend using all said and done. Some proper casting silicon would be the way to go. Now this thing ended up looking way more opaque than I had planned. And I was pretty, pretty devastated at this point. What I decided to do because it was so opaque uh, from all the snow was take a lot of it off using this angle grinder, grinding it down, making it look more like an ice, a chunk of ice than a snow globe. There's still big issues as you'll see uh, in a bit here. All right. Ah, holy, that's quite the uh, <laughs> look. So this is where we are at now. After taking that grinder to this thing, uh, it looks a lot better. I'm really hoping that we'll be able to see inside a lot better now. It's obviously still white. It needs to be sanded and polished down a lot more. But first, I need to get myself cleaned up here. Yeah. Oh, and I broke the bottom off. So I'm going to try to glue that on. And uh, yeah, I don't know. Use some epoxy or something to really make that strong. We'll see. This is turning out to be the project of my nightmares so we'll see what we can do so after taking the angle grinder to it i needed to polish this thing up so i got this polishing compound from my local hardware store it's just used for polishing any clear coats and i used 180 grit sandpaper with that now you can go a lot higher and finer with that i was in a big time crunch so i just went with a 180 and you'll see what i do to bring some transparency back in later so like I said, the bottom had broken off when I was grinding down the resin globe. Uh, so I ended up just using some epoxy two-part glue that dries in five minutes and really cures nice and hard. So I added that into the base as well as the battery pack. And then after that, went and varnished up the base, did about three coats of clear coat semi-gloss on the wooden base there. It turned out awesome. But now it's time to add some clarity and some transparency to this thing using some resin. Now I'm just gonna go with the Envirotex light as opposed to the casting resin again. This stuff is uh, cured in 24 hours instead of 72. So this really brings out that transparency and you'll see that all my snow floated to the top of each layer. <sighs> okay. So here's the big reveal. I mean, it turned out better than I thought it would after taking off the cover, but uh, here we go. <laughs> so here it is. Let's see if I can get that in focus a little better. So, I mean, the shape is cool. It looks cool. It looks like ice. And you can sort of see in there some terrain, but uh, obviously there's some big layers in there and at least the lamp's working. Lamp is working, but yeah, anyway, it doesn't look like a proper blizzard because there's layers in there and so uh, things, if, if there was something that could go wrong with it, that thing went wrong <laughs> basically with this. So yeah, my light's working at least. I managed just to quickly throw some tape on the bottom. I would put a new proper bottom on there, but I ran out of time. Uh, that's kind of the big, big thing here is I really ran out of time for this. This had to be done today. So, you know, it turned out, I, I think I like this better than the glo how a globe would have looked. It does look a lot like ice. It does look like there is remnants of a blizzard in there. I hope you guys had a great holiday, a great Christmas, all the best in the new year. And we'll be talking really soon. But uh, yeah, thanks again. And here we'll, we'll do some fancy shots with our block of ice and yeah. So anyway, take care guys and I'll be seeing you on the next one.
So here it is, a project that was meant to be simple and easy a nice little relaxing thing to do over the holidays. And this thing ended up being probably one of my most stressful projects yet. The big thing was the curing time and then the snow did not work out. It all floated to the top of each layer, but hey, it still looks cool. I'm proud of this thing and yeah, I think it's still going to look real nice on the old shelf.